Louis Armstrong once said, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The beautiful thing about this earth we live on, as it's hurled through space by the forces of the universe, we still haven't discovered a lot of very cool things, and in the most unbelievable of places. We're so lucky we get to explore it, but be warned, these places can be haunted. This is how we're living right now in the UK, doing some insane stuff, getting as close as we possibly can. They can be dangerous, and in some cases, deadly. We've got planes, trains, and automobiles, and so much more. You won't believe what they found in the middle of nowhere. <coughs> Mystery Jet This is not an airport or an airplane boneyard. Instead, this abandoned 737 sits in a field near some kind of limestone quarry. The crazy thing is that no one seems to know how it got there. You think someone would notice the arrival of a Boeing 737 in a field near a fairly major road, but no, it's located near the southern coast of the Bukit Peninsula in Bali. It may have been purchased and reassembled where it now stands, which would explain, at least in part, why no one saw it arrive. Apart from that, little is known about the abandoned aircraft. Some locals say that the plane was destined to be converted into a tourist-friendly restaurant. Apparently, however, the owner ran out of money and left his Boeing to slowly rust surrounded by a shabby hut and a few shipping containers. The vessel is locked away by a huge gate as it sits on a private land and is protected 24 hours a day by a security guard. Those wanting to get up close are required to pay a fee and only the luckiest of them are allowed to go inside the actual plane. The plane has now become a tourist attraction in its own right. And strangely, it's not the only abandoned plane you can visit on the Indonesian island. About five miles north sits another abandoned Boeing 737, right next to a donut shop. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Chicken Church this unusual structure has taken root in the middle of the jungle on the island of Java, near the Hindu temple and the Buddhist temple. But believe it or not, the building known as the Chicken Church wasn't ever supposed to actually be a church. Hidden deep inside the Indonesian jungle lies an enchanted church which looks like a giant chicken. Not the dove the builder had dreamed of. But looks aren't everything, right? The structure attracts more curious travelers and photographers every year. Now people of many different religions, including Buddhists, Muslims, and Christians, travel to the remote prayer house to worship in their own way. Nowadays, the chicken church's many floors are decorated with jeweled tiles, ceilings are painted with clouds, walls are filled with scenes from local mythology. Twelve prayer rooms have been created in its catacombs. Early birds can watch the sunrise from its crown. It even has a cafe in the bird's posterior. And yes, eggs are on the menu. It wasn't ever fully furnished because its builder ran out of money. It's rumored to be hunted by ghosts from Indonesian folklore, but that doesn't stop people from coming to check it out. <laughs> Pizzeria on top of a volcano. Rising 2,800 feet above sea level, the Pacaya volcano overlooks the nearby villages in Guatemala. Since 1965, when it became active once again, the Pacaya has become a magnet for tourists, and in 2019, the Pacaya became the first pizza place in the country and one of the first on Earth to use lava caves as ovens. Pizza Pacaya's founder, Mario Mancilla, became fascinated with the volcano in 2010 when it exploded spectacularly. Instead of running away, Garcia decided to stick around. He saw tour guides inviting tourists to roast marshmallows over the hardened but still hot lava. That's how the idea was born. For years, he baked pies for him and his friends on the cave-like structures. In 2019, his hobby became a business. Mario regularly hikes to the volcano's top, carrying about 60 pounds of ingredients and equipment on his back to meet tourists who have made a reservation. He's got various toppings, including meats like salami, pepperoni, chorizo, bruschetta, and vegetables, onions, olives, and peppers. All of it, the works. He assembles the pizza using previously kneaded dough and bakes it for about 14 minutes. When he cooks on top of still hot lava, the process only takes a couple of minutes as the magma can reach up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Spooky Sea Forts 
The Monso army forts in the Thames estuary are decaying reminders of the darkest days of World War II. During the war, London's ports were vulnerable to enemy bombings by air and by sea. The answer was to build forts out at sea so that foreign planes and boats could be destroyed before reaching the coastline. Built on land and then transported to their watery homes, the forts were designed by Guy Monsell, a British civil engineer. The anti-aircraft tower forts were constructed in 1942, with each fort consisting of a cluster of seven stilted buildings surrounding a central command tower. When operational, catwalks connected the buildings. Access for the soldiers posted to these forts was via an entrance at the base of the platform. Parts of the ladders that the men would have used are still visible today, but are in very poor condition. Indeed, attempting to access these forts is extremely hazardous. After their successful wartime career, the forts were decommissioned in the 1950s. One fort was badly damaged by both a storm and being struck by a ship and was dismantled in 1959 and 1960. In the 60s and 70s, the remaining forts were famously taken over as pirate radio stations. <laughs> Doomsday Bunker City This former U.S. Army base, consisting of 575 private military-built concrete and steel all-risk bunkers, is now repurposed and affordably priced, ready to provide life-saving shelter. The Black Hills Army base was originally built by the Army Corps of Engineers as a fortress to store bombs and munitions from 1942 to 1967 when the base was completely retired. Vivos now owns the property and the bunkers. This place, Vivos X Point, is located near the Black Hills area of South Dakota. Ever since 1967, when the base was retired, the base was used as a cattle ranch. Vivos has repurposed the base into the largest private shelter community on Earth for as many as 5,000 people to survive virtually any catastrophic event and the aftermath. Sounds like a party. Each bunker is 80 by 26 and a half feet capable of comfortably accommodating up to 24 people with a supply of food, water, fuel, and hygienic supplies for a year or more. A 99-year lease on a bunker costs $1,000 a year, plus a $25,000 deposit paid up front. It's spread over approximately 18 square miles. The off-grid area is surrounded by a fence and reached by road or a nearby municipal airport. This is the perfect place when the zombie apocalypse begins. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy Car Cemetery Up to 100 cars in various conditions were discovered cascading down the inside of a cave in Caradigian, Wales. The mountain of abandoned cars from the 70s has been found around 200 feet down an abandoned slate mine. The waterfall-like formation can be seen lit up by a beam of light. There are hundreds of cars on top of each other, and eerily, the cave is known as the Cavern of Lost Souls. Urban explorers made a treacherous journey through darkness, in dangerous conditions, and were stunned to find a car graveyard at the mine, which closed in 1960. The mine opened up around 1836 and closed up around 1960 and has been abandoned since then. Eerie new images from inside the Cavern of Lost Souls reveal the mountain of abandoned cars still untouched years after they were first uncovered. The craziest part? No one knows how these cars got there. The mountain of cars and scrap metal rises over 100 feet from the lake surface to the mine's original entrance. Below the lake surface, the ghostly remains of cars lay hidden, silently decaying. There's something so surreal about this exploration, totally dark, wet, slippery, and very dangerous. And then you see the most unexpected thing, a mountain of old cars. <laughs> Deserted California Beach this community is so small because the rising Salton Sea drowned part of the trailer community and it never recovered. Welcome to Bombay Beach in Imperial County, California. It's the lowest community in the United States, located 223 feet below sea level. This area is an incredibly dangerous one for those living in the surrounding communities. Bombay Beach, along with a number of others located along the east shore of the body of water, deals with rising and falling water levels and a large portion of that was once destroyed and has been abandoned. Now, it's either sitting underwater or stuck half buried in mud. It was designed to be the California version of the French Riviera. 
before it was destroyed by the Salton Sea, Bombay Beach was meant to be a playground for rich vacationers in the 40s and 50s. It stayed a popular getaway for beachgoers until the 1980s, when the draining and increasing salinity of the Salton Sea destroyed the lake's ecosystem and drove businesses and private landowners out of the area, essentially rendering Bombay Beach a ghost town. The town once hosted the crew of Anthony Bourdain, no reservations, for the Travel Channel and was the filming location for part of the fictional made-for-TV movie, The Big One, The Great Los Angeles Earthquake. <laughs> Abandoned Fairy Tale Village In one of the most historic and beautiful parts of northwest Turkey is a deep valley covered in dense pine forests and blessed with thermal springs. And row upon row of identical, castle-like chateaus but when you look a little closer, something seems off. The roads between them are unfinished, construction debris litters the ground, and there's not a soul in sight. It's a fairy tale ghost town. It started out as an ambitious, luxurious development project that fell victim to mismanagement and global financial ruin. Burj Al Babas, as the place is known, is located just a few miles from the historic town of Modernu. By the early 2000s, Modernu and its thermal springs had attracted the attention of property developers and investors. Burj Al Babas was born, a collection of luxurious holiday homes catering to wealthy clients. There would be an opulent Turkish bath, a shopping and entertainment center, and more. The future of the 300 closely packed chateau is now uncertain, and the project has become a cautionary tale for other developers in Turkey's debt-laden construction sector. Turkish officials have even proposed making the town a UNESCO World Heritage Site. <laughs> secret Presidential Subway Station There are secrets under our feet, above our heads, and around every single corner in New York City. And one time capsule that remains just out of reach is Track 61, which, at one end, is found behind a locked door on 49th Street. The infamous Track 61 is supposedly still in use as a secret escape train for residents visiting the city. The station is not much to look at, but there's still an antique train car permanently parked in the hidden powerhouse. Track 61 is located beneath the Waldorf Astoria New York Hotel within an underground storage yard northeast of Grand Central Terminal. The platform is part of the Grand Central Terminal Complex. The earliest reported use of the track was during the tenure of Franklin D. Roosevelt, who supposedly had his car transported to the station. Roosevelt is also rumored to have entered and exited via the station. Track 61 likely hit the comings and goings of a number of presidents over the years. Everyone from military generals to celebrities have been said to use Track 61 for any number of movements, but given the amount of secrecy involved, all are hard to confirm. However, the unmarked brass door on street level, which leads to the station, is proof that someone important is still using the track. Ghost Town on Fire This place once boasted 14 active coal mines and 2,500 residents in the early 20th century, but by the 1960s, its boomtown heyday had passed and most of its mines were abandoned. Still, over 1,000 people called it home, until a coal mine fire began below. When the Centralia, Pennsylvania coal mine fire began, residents thought it would quickly burn out on its own. But the Centralia fire is still burning nearly 60 years later. In 1962, a fire started in a landfill and spread to the labyrinth coal tunnels that miners dug thousands of feet below the surface. Though competing theories exist about how the fire was sparked, it's thought that the Centralia dump fire sparked a much larger mine fire beneath the town. And despite repeated attempts to extinguish the flames, the fire caught a coal seam and still burns to this day. The fire that burns beneath the surface continues to spew poisonous smoke into the air through hundreds of fissures, and the ground is in constant danger of collapsing. The reason, ironically, is the aftermath of the mining that defined Centralia for all those years. There are so many abandoned mine tunnels in the area that one, many, or all could be fueling the fire. <laughs> Deadliest Garden in the World an English duchess created this garden dedicated entirely to flora, which are deadly and or narcotic. Behind big black gates, the carefully curated garden contains about 100 legendary killers like Deadly Nightshade and Hemlock. Formal gardens had been planted in that spot by the first duke in 1750, but by 1950 it had closed. Fast forward 50 years as the duchess inspected her new digs, she came across an overgrown, neglected section she decided to restore it, not to its former glory, but into a new, modern garden. 
the poison garden opened in 2005, the Duchess shied away from planting healing medicinals and instead sought out hard-to-get deadly poisons. Also included in the gardens are narcotic plants like opium poppies, cannabis, magic mushrooms, and tobacco. Tour guides explain their deadly properties while keeping visitors away from the plants, warning them, do not touch any of the plants, don't even smell them. There are plants here that can kill you. Because the danger posed by the poisonous plants is very real, some can kill or sicken just through touch, some plants are caged, and the garden is secured each evening behind gates under a 24-hour security watch. Trash at the bottom of the Mariana Trench Victor Vescovo descended nearly seven miles to the deepest place in the ocean, the Pacific Ocean's Mariana Trench. The American explorer found plastic waste on the seafloor while breaking the record for the deepest ever dive. It's the third time humans have reached the ocean's extreme depths. The first dive to the bottom took place in 1960 by U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh and Swiss engineer Jacques Picard. Movie director James Cameron then made a solo plunge half a century later in 2012 in his bright green sub. He spent four hours exploring the bottom of the trench in its submersible, built to withstand the immense pressure of the deep. He found sea creatures but also found a plastic bag and candy wrappers. The latest descent, which reached 35,849 feet beneath the waves, is now the deepest, making Victor the new record holder. Beneath Hawaii and the Philippines, close to the island of Guam, sits the Mariana Trench. We're talking about the deepest spot in the entire ocean. This crescent-shaped impression at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean has a maximum depth of almost 7 miles. To give you some perspective on just how deep we're talking, if you were to put the entire Mount Everest at the bottom, its peak would still sit around 7,000 feet below sea level. Hmm. <laughs> Winchester Haunted House Everyone loves a great ghost story, and the infamous Winchester House haunting is one for the books. It was even made into a movie in 2018. Despite its delightful appearance, this massive California mansion's history is ripe with tragic mystery and ghosts. The most famous story is that Mrs. Winchester was being haunted by the spirits of those killed by the Winchester rifle, which her late husband's company had invented, the gun that won the West. Overcome with grief in the wake of her husband's death, folklore states that the widow sought out a medium who could commune with the dead, who gave her a haunting vision. Through the medium, the deceased husband told his widow that the spirit's tragedies were a result of the blood money the family had made off the Winchester rifles. The medium warned the poor woman that vengeful ghosts would seek her out, and to protect herself she must build a home for the spirits who had fallen from this terrible weapon. And she did. This glorious haunted mansion. Starting in 1886, Winchester designed and oversaw the construction of the sprawling Queen Anne-style Victorian mansion that bears her name in San Jose, California. The Church of Ghosts You can't miss this while visiting the tiny town of Lukova in the Czech Republic and its long-abandoned church filled with eerie white figures. The church is packed with ghost-like figures. They sit solemnly in the pews, congregate at the altar, and stand at the doorways. St. George's Church was consecrated in 1352, and the locals thought the building was haunted. So much so, the congregation began holding mass outside. It stood for hundreds of years, but was abandoned in 1968 after the roof collapsed. Cut to 2014, a professor at the Department of Design and Fine Arts at the University of West Bohemia asked his students to find a church for an art installation and the artist, Jacob Hadrava, had no idea. And this is the fruits of his labor. Hadrava used his fellow classmates as models, covering them in sheets and creating plaster casts he posed around the church. The statues represent the German Bohemians, an ethnic group that used to live in the area, expelled from the Czech Republic after World War II. It's a creative way to make social commentary on the region's history. And we're here for it. Do you believe in ghosts? Is this a kind of supernatural encounter, or the clever idea of an artist with a unique point of view and a great idea? Tower Trapped in a Lake This abandoned church tower in the heart of this lonely mountain lake is not from a classic Hollywood movie or a famous romantic novel. Church bell towers that emerge from the surface of man-made lakes are unusual, to say the least. 
There are entire towns and villages that were deliberately destroyed, and today their remains lie at the bottom of artificial lakes. Lake Regia is an artificial lake located in northern Italy near the borders of Switzerland and Austria. The lake was formed 60 years ago, although planning for the project began as early as the 1920s. Under the water, there are streets, houses, and other buildings that were once full of people. Sometimes, during the construction of dams and artificial lakes in the valleys suitable for such constructions, there are situations when thriving towns and old villages positioned in those valleys must be flooded. Approximately 1,290 acres of land were submerged. More than 163 houses were flooded. Today, the upper end of the bell tower that appears on the surface of the green-blue water is the only remainder of the old town. The bell towers of the churches were the highest structures in medieval Europe, and that's why they're the only structures of the submerged towns that can be seen on the surface of some artificial lakes. See, you can find the strangest things in the middle of nowhere. Ready to find out more? Like and subscribe and stick around for more Missing Files content. Mm -hmm.